GDP caused ripples in statistics and the markets. Welcome to Critical Point Podcast, July 30th. I um, want to talk about this morning's minus 32% GDP record destruction. Uh, trade was actually expecting minus 34%, however. Uh, let's look at the recent number out of the Fred system over at the St. Louis Fed Reserve. This is the consumer price index. Does show prices were coming back. A little bit of inflation might reflect a little better economy. Notice this gray zone. What the Fed is doing is showing that we are in a recession. Okay, I took a look at what is the what are the links of recessions, and man, they can go all the way up to uh, close to two years. But the minimum was about five months, which would suggest we're now eligible, if you will, for an end to the recession. I don't think it can come that soon. Won't surprise me, however, we could end it by end of the year, but I think we got lingering problems into early next year. But anyways, a little bit of a rebound on inflation, or I should say a particular measurement of inflation. And so there's your real gross domestic product in terms of percent of change. And this is the second quarter uh, projection. It may be revised over time. Uh, at any rate, look at that collapse. By GDP alone, we are in a depression. And cyclically, however, it looks like we have evolved to the point of managing our economy so that depressions will only show up from the 72-year and 216-year cycles. Those are to do to be turning down in the 2040s, maybe starting a little sooner, and we can have a depression then, okay? But you shouldn't be having a depression now. The only downturn that was due was a major long-term, no super cycle whatsoever, and it's just a nine-year cycle, also called the juggler cycle that you can look up online. It is a very important cycle. We've always had a recession with it since the Great Depression, from the Great Depression back into the early 1800s, as best I can tell, it was always a recession or a depression and even panics in the stock market and crashes. So the point is, it can become more serious um, than what we're looking at. It's just that you have to look back to the 1930s and realize that it looks like we fixed some things. And I think it's too soon to maybe get revert to those old statistics. So I got to be a bit optimistic here. There's not going to turn into a true depression, but we got something like it. It's a different one this time. And there's the collapse in the industrial production index. Can't see it, but they got their gray zone here telling us we're in a recession. Here's all the other recessions. And most of these recessions, not all of them, most of them linked with the major long-term nine-year cycle. There is something of a secondary recession that occurs between the nine-year cycles about halfway. So what it means is about five to seven years after your primary recession that in the past has normally occurred at the start of a decade. So that means about mid-decade, maybe a little later, you can get a secondary recession that can be worse for some types of businesses and various people in, in relation to their jobs. Um, most of the country, however, goes by and it normally slips under the radar screen and is not called an actual recession. Here's the initial jobless claims, huge explosion off this virus-generated recession, big collapse, although we're recovering. However, news today was the market's not happy that initial jobless claims are picking up a bit. There's a lot of statistics out there suggesting the economy is rolling over and the virus is just exploding, although I'm picking up some signs it may be starting to roll over and not be quite so serious. But the problem is it may take a long time to get it down to where we could say it's not that serious, okay? All it is is just an easing back here. Some of the news is not supporting that, saying it's still getting worse. So the crude oil market is sharply off today. And it's just because of worries, renewed worries or a refocus of the bad fundamentals and the economy. The 10-year note was due to rally, and I was puzzled at how it was just sitting there so quiet, so struggling, and I thought it was running out of time because it's also due in a few weeks to swing the other way. And now we're seeing finally a breakout, a surge, a pickup of volatility here pick up a momentum as it moves into a long-term top that might still be two weeks away. 
warning that money could be flowing out of the stock market now into the bond market. I'm not convinced we're going to see as much as we've seen in the past. We could see the stock market drop much more than the bond market actually rallies. Okay, uh, I won't show the interest rate chart, but it is going lower as I anticipated. But we are due for super cycle lows in interest rates any day now to the end of next uh, year. I think it comes sooner rather than later, but I just don't know if does it come now. Uh, I will try to make calls, but I may have to call several times to get it right. At uh, any rate, we should set up a 15 to 25-year uptrend in interest rates. We should set up a 15 to 25-year uptrend in uh, inflation. And I'm doing some cyclical research now that points to cycles that can bottom, super long-term cycles bottoming now and some that are already bottomed that suggest an increase in inter or increase in battles and wars and skirmishes over time we can and then you can break that down into where it's primarily international battles rather than civil wars and they normally are the opposite of one another but you can also combine them and it's suggesting this trend is up for this decade and peaking about the time the economy is to peak in 2020 eight and 2031 and the stock market should fall and we should have a recession the war num number of wars can then back off and it's not really wars as much as battles and a variety of other statistics but it can extend to even worse levels towards the end of the 2030s early 2040s about the time we're due for a 1929 crash and economic blowout we don't know where it's the wars will trigger that or the blowout will trigger the wars who knows there's many other factors going on but I find it interesting that we can increase wars now or battles and whatever alongside inflation and um, interest rates I think this is suggesting we're heading for higher costs for business that may temper the upside of stock market however there may be some factors in there that we're doing that in inflation interest rates to actually help out the middle class or poor by paying them more okay and so who needs a, a a very good stock market as long as our paychecks are better in my opinion um, so I'm willing to put up with it I don't need such a wonderful stock market I'll make some money out of it somehow and I am going to be somewhat of a uh, pessimist on the stock market going higher over the next 20 years just because I think it's a sign of things that are not working right rather than signs of things that are working right but we'll see hopefully we evolve away from that and I'll be wrong but I'm not going to wind up shorting the stock market many times and turning bearish and be a pessimist in the sense of how high it can go. I will be a bull because I believe in the cycles are saying you might as well be a bull. The stock market is going up the next 15, 25 years, even if inflation and interest rates are going up. The question is how well will it go up? And the question is also where would the dollar go if inflation is going up and interest rates going up because that really should confuse the dollar. Okay. And as I think back from 1950s, 1970s, basically the dollar was able to rise and then finally, towards the end of inflation, with the super super rally in interest rates, it jumped on board the interest rates and and exploded. But ultimately, I think uh, there's a chance here for the dollar to rather be range bound, soft enough to help our economies and be in more in line with inflation than the higher interest rates. And here's Bitcoin, and it's due to top for level three. It may top for a late level two and be down in August. But it's possible it's launched a much larger uptrend that can last for a few to several months. And I'll just update the best I can over time. This is the dollar index. It's still going lower over worries of the economy. But the fascinating thing is the inflation bulls are actually selling the dollar. And I don't think they're really thinking in terms of the economy falling apart. So you're getting two types of sellers doing the same thing at the same time. But they're actually at odds with one another and some of their thinking and beliefs of what's driving these markets. And here we have gold backing off. So it's now questioning, gee, with a poor economy, is it proper to have gold going higher? As panic kind of protection, yes. But as disinflation, deflation versus inflation, no. Because we would more likely have more deflation if the economy is going to fall apart yet again. So why would you want gold? So the only reason to have it is you just want something else other than a currency, you know, ultimate safe, ultra safe kind of thing. Okay. 
any rate, gold is overbought. It is due for a top in the next couple of weeks. It is due for a pullback in August. So I think it's going to fall in line with a lower stock market in August. Manage your risk relative analysis for others and stay safe and healthy.